Guys, Alan here today uh, on Halloween just to kind of go over the new Beetlejuice CD that was released, of course, the Beetlejuice, the demos, the demos, the demos. And we're going to start uh, in chronological order, of course, and I'm just going to kind of tell you what I what I think of them. I'm not going to uh, play parts of the song, well, I may potentially, but... Uh, they said uh, I had already recorded it uh, with like full thoughts and whatever and yes it went way too long but anyway all being dead thing original demo nothing really much changed apart from a few explicit lyrics the interesting the interesting thing though to note here is that the whole being dead thing part two actually uh, is mashed into the whole being dead thing uh, as one song rather than two parts in the, in the show uh, or the show as we know it um, it's quite interesting actually and there's a whole um, kind of Hamilton-esque rap segment which is quite cool uh, that's not great then in the second song uh, it's a cut opening number uh, from 20, 2015 and honestly I love this song I laughed so hard when I when I initially heard this song. It has quite a like like a Celtic almost. I know it's not on purpose, uh, but I feel like the Australian and the uh, the Irish kind of music in terms of that way is, is fairly similar. But it almost as well kind of has like this kind of Scottishy undertone. Um, but yeah, that's not great. Uh, some amazing lyrics there, especially yeah, death is filled with fake see you later. Um, we're, we're just gonna go and speak to the caterers or something. I don't know, there's, there's like some, uh, this song basically captures the, the, the awkwardness of, of funerals, but like in a, in a funny way. The whole then is the third uh, third song on the album. It's uh, the twenty fifteen mm -hmm. cut opening number. Honestly, I I could see where this is cut. Uh, it's a good song. It reminds me of kind of uh, look, uh, look down, kind of Lemmy's kind of uh, mm -hmm. prison ry rhythm. I can imagine like uh, minors or something or like. I don't know, people hanging their heads, uh, walking in that kind of ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, from like Les Mis. It's kind of got that feel to it, but uh, yeah, it doesn't do a great job, in my opinion, of opening the show. So while I, while I do enjoy the, the rhythms of it, I can kind of see why that's cut. Uh, Gotta Get Out of This House is probably one of my favorite songs on this album. Uh, I first encountered it, if you look up the Beetlejuice black and white ball that happened uh, last October. This was one of the songs that, uh, that, um, that is uh, sung at that concert and I, I wish I could have been there. <laughs> Because this song is absolutely legendary. I love this song. I I wish this could have this could have stayed in the show. Maybe not as an opening number, but uh, as a number, mm. regardless. Because I I absolutely like any of you watching this. This this song is absolutely perfect. Pun not intended, I guess. Because your your name's Eddie Perfect. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I, the other interesting thing is the Barbara 2.0 kind of undertone is, is lined in there well before Barbara 2.0 was written because this was in 2016 and Barbara 2.0 was, I believe, played about within 2019 as, as, uh, as you can see uh, around the rest of the album. Now, uh, the next thing, Dead Mom, the 2014 version, I, I, um, I love a lot of lyrics in this because it's kind of more, more darker and more, more gritty than, 
than we actually have in the show. But again, I can see why a lot of these bits were were cut in order to make it. I guess so f- family could go and see it, but uh, yeah, great song. Mama Wood then in the 2016 or 2015 cut song is actually, um, is actually, uh, is actually one of my favorite songs. Um, um, it's got this kind of real, um, Dear Evan Hansen and kind of, and there he goes, plays into a tautology from far across the yellow field. I hear him calling, follow me. If you guys know that bit from Dear Evan Hansen, it's got that kind of very um, optimistic, but kind of sad at the same time kind of uh, tones. I could imagine Lydia's blocking or choreography for this would be like running from from point to point in the house, kind of like placing different memories, maybe photos or photo albums, which of course would probably be stock images, but that's uh, besides the point. Uh, I would, this would be a great replacement for Dead Mom. I love Dead Mom, but um, yes, I wouldn't be complaining if this was swapped over but that being said the mom is one of my favorite actual current songs that we have then we have sign yourself over to me and um, one of the things i said in my beetlejuice diss track is that there uh, wasn't enough charles songs so i'm quite i'm quite happy to see that uh charles song was in the works this is obviously for the actually i can't spoil that because it's a it's a talking scene so i was quite shocked when when i actually saw the saw saw the scene where this would slot into when i went to see the show so i don't want to spoil it in case people just ever does open up again and you guys can see that but if you have seen the show you know where this song uh, lights up and Yes, sign yourself over to me. This is quite an interesting song. Basically, trying to get Delia to to sign a a prenuptial agreement and stuff. It's it's quite funny, and I wish that I wish that some of the lyrics in this were turned into actual lines in the in the show because this is probably next next to death not great. This is probably the most I have laughed listening to this album. Like it's it this song kind of captured a lot of the same magic when I when I first kind of fell in love with Beetlejuice and the jokes. Yeah, this song had it, but I can obviously see within the confines of the show how it may not fit. But anyway. Delia's TED Talk is obviously a replacement of No Reason, which you can see below the original demo for. Uh, Delia's TED Talk, I don't know if it is as strong as No Reason, but again, it's hilariously funny, so if the, if the, if the time allowed to have an extra, like, 10 or 20 minutes onto the show, I would, I would have loved to possibly see Dewey said talk like in action but again a lot of these things I can see why because they don't really push the the story forward but but it's kind of Delia's Dear Evan Hansen number in a way so it's I'm a, I'm a sucker for like those kind of Dear Evan Hansen I want slash stop sob story kind of song so uh, so yeah the other set up great no reason the original 2015 uh, demo nothing really uh, well obviously there's uh, quite a lot of lyrical changes but the basic bass is still kind of there uh the one thing i will say is that there's there's a kind of weird um I don't know how to even describe it, but like a downward kind of slow down kind of rappy bit, which I can see why that's not in uh, due, to, due to time, but the basic, it's amazing to see like 
Obviously, I don't know if this is the first draft or whatever, I'm assuming it is because it's his original demo, but yeah, it's amazing to see a lot of these lyrics still intact, and, and same with uh, Friday Their Lives Now, I'm, I'm gonna swear in this part because uh, one of my one of my favorite lines is actually a swear word from this uh, part, but uh, my favorite part in Friday Their Lines, which is within my top three Beetlejuice songs that made it into the current show. And my favorite part is the, oh, that was a soliloquy, so you're the one that's being rude. Whatever it takes to make him go crazy. That part, but in this part, it's like, in the in the show, it's like, hey, Beetlejuice, we can kind of hear you, but in, in this, it's just the delivery of this Jesus, Jesus Christ Beetlejuice. We can fucking hear you, like the way the way it was delivered. Just the the, the thought of Robert Clark or David Joseph Berg, like that kind of almost violence coming out of their mouth, just made me made me laugh. But yeah, that's funny. This sh this uh, original demo also features like some kind of Irishisms, which I don't think would kind of kind of fit with the American like the specifically the word shite but uh, I think that's kind of an Australian thing too but I've never really heard any Americans say it anyway say my name again the basic premise is still there it's amazing how any perfect can just whack out amazing amazing songs with these original um demos but um yeah basic premise is still there um the interesting thing if you get a turn to listen to it is the possession uh possession sequence in this song is a slightly different and i don't know whether it's a good different or a bad different it's just interesting it's an interesting choice but um had i not heard the actual I say my name that we have today, I don't think that I, I, I would mind the difference. Like, it's, it's still an amazing song. You can only work with what you get. Beetlejuice and Lydia is a cut song from 2015. Um, you can only work with what you get. It's kind of, um, I forget the name of the type of song it is, but it's another, like, a traditional Broadway, like, Da, 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 like something that you would probably see in like a chorus line or what's the other one what's the like the traditional Chicago's uh, never seen Moulin Rouge but that type of a, that type of aesthetic reminds me of something that I would imagine if I did listen to Beetlejuice or if I did listen to Moulin Rouge then that, that would be kind of um, what what uh, what I would expect the songs to be like there is also some some uh, questionable questionable uh, references in there um, given the current uh, situation so um, I I uh, I maybe it's a good thing it was good I don't know step right up um is uh, in replacement uh, for uh, the banana boat song at the end of act one aka the beetlejuice summoning thing i can imagine that uh, where it's from anyway because the stage if you see it kind of gets turned into a circus and i could kind of see that this may be where that song um fits in but i don't know necessarily did it fit in like i think the the banana boat song is such a classic like beetlejuice song that that not having that be the the summoning of beetlejuice kind of is weird but maybe i again i i haven't seen the dc show so maybe the banana boat song was actually in the in the DC show. I just didn't see it, so I can't really comment on that. Anyway, uh, uh, a little more of your time 
It's a nice little ballad by Charles. Uh, this could potentially uh, take place in the Netherworld sequence, either before or after home, I would imagine. Um, I could see this being in the show in game. I love Beetlejuice, so I would have happily sit in the theater for like, I don't know, 20, 30 extra minutes while they put in some of these songs. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, I, I would basically really like to see this in the show, actually. But, uh, yeah, because that's one of the things I said I would like more songs for Charles. The children we didn't have is in replacement, I believe, of Barbara 2.0. While I love this song, and, and uh, um, there's a great lyric in this song where it's like, think of think of people all these ages. Like, it is just think of like uh, a twenty year old walking out the door or whatever, and then it says, think of a teen, and then I presume Adam goes. I know who you mean, and then it goes into, that must be the reason that he needs this, like some of the original Barbara 2.0 uh, lyrics, but um, <laughs> yeah, great song, but considering Barbara 2.0 is probably my favorite, favorite song from, from Beetlejuice Next to Friday Their Lives, and uh, and uh, say my name. Uh, I'm pretty happy that this didn't end up in the show. But again, if we had an extra 20 or 30 minutes in the show, I'm sure Carrie Butler would have killed this in a good way. Of course, Adam and Barbara, what's left? If I had to choose between the children we didn't have and uh, what's left, because they're both in would have been, I'm assuming, in places. Uh, Barbara 2.0, I would choose what's left because, uh, both because it's quite cool, like the type of theater music that I enjoy most. But then it also kind of is slowly more shaping up to be Barbara 2.0. The, then we get the, like, the original demo for Barbara 2.0. Um, dare, dare I say this, this potentially may be slightly better than, than the actual Barber 2.0, but, uh, I, I don't, I don't really, really know because they're both amazing songs, but it's kind of insane that, um, I forget when, when, uh, the other song got to get out of this house, but, like, that's when, that's when they got to get out of this house. Melody becomes the Barbara 2.0 melody. And that's been like years and years. Yeah, but I'm, I'm glad that he was able to recycle the melody. He being Eddie Perfect. Because I absolutely love that. I'm going to skip through the Ozo songs. Because both of them are like club, DJ nightclub kind of songs and while well, there's nothing wrong with that this video is getting kind of long and i don't know how well the the author songs would fit into the show in my opinion i think they're good songs but in the context of the show uh, i don't know how well they would fit mix it up together is a very interesting one actually because i <laughs> I love the, the inspir the, not the inspirational, but the instrumental is the word I was looking for. I love the instrumental of, of mixing up together and like the idea of the Beetlejuice juice rap. I had actually, uh, I'd actually heard it again. It was another one of those Beetlejuice black and white uh, ball things that they performed in a concert and I I actually thought that this song was super super good um, but now that I can hear all the lyrics in full quality I still think it's an amazing song and it's probably my would be my choice if there was if there was a song I would assume uh, this was this is the same 
part of the exorcism in the show, but if if there was a song in the in the exorcism part, uh, and this is where that was supposed to go out of out of the two out of the two Oto songs and mix it up together, I think mixed it up together is my winner for that one. But that being said, I do really like the the whole being dead thing part three or four which is not on the CD but it's in the show I actually messaged Eddie about how much I, I, I liked it basically if you've seen the show it's uh, where Red Beetlejuice comes out and he's like you wanted your mom you wanted it gone you messed with the wrong book now look what you've done and like that's that's a very that's a very quick abbreviated version of it because I I can't actually remember all the lyrics I just remember little bits it's look who's holding all, yeah it all blew up in your face it's no look who's holding all the aces you wanted your mom you wanted her gone you messed with the wrong book no look what you've done it's that that kind of that kind of song uh, is one of my favorite editions additional song that's not on the cd and i wish i wish it was so it mix it up together replaces that and then uh, i don't know but mix it up together that being said is a phenomenal song what i know now again is very interesting a lot of the choices uh same kind of premises there but I don't know. I, I don't know if it's necessarily better or not. There's, there's um, there's kind of uh, where the dance breaks are kind of is a little bit different, and I reckon that to make up my mind whether I like the original or, or the one we see on the see on the stage, I would have to see the original thing blocked out, but um to be honest what i know now is while i absolutely love 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 all the beetlejuice songs what i know now would not be my kind of favorite so i don't i don't really i don't really know which which one i prefer like they're both they're both good songs i just couldn't pick a favorite between the original and the one we have now Goodbye, Emily Deeds. He's on the, on the other hand, I'm sure you can tell by the way I got excited just thinking about it. Goodbye, Emily Deeds is my fit is probably, yes, my, like, in my top three of this, of this album. Goodbye, Emily Deeds is so, 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 so amazing if uh, there is a version of Dana Stein Gold singing this at the Beatles Black and White Ball and ever since then because you can't really hear some of the lyrics in that video but ever since then I really wanted like a one recorded on a professional microphone and here we have Goodbye Emily Deeds it's uh, in place of home and uh, while I love home I kind of wish there was there was a way for both of these songs to exist in the in the show. Like I said, slap an extra 20, 30 minutes onto the show and put some of these uh, put some of these good songs in because they're amazing. Did I actually miss? Did I actually miss when I did? I missed everything. Is kind of meh from Boy Inferno. Um, I actually prefer this song to what I know now, and that's what I'll say about that. Ain't It Strange is a closing uh, number. It has also been called When an Asshole Saves the Day. And it is it is quite a uh, interesting for a closing number. I think the way that they, they melded the closing number that we have now, which is uh, Jump in the Line, the way they, they melded um the way that they melded like three or four songs in in the melody of that is like and like wrapped it up in a nice little bow with like the most mind-boggling end for me and like when i initially heard the cd i was like 
yes, this is this is like the the perfect end to the show. And like when when I actually when I actually saw the show, like again, if I was able bodied, this would be the type of song. Um, jump in the line. This is that like. The way that ends the mom, if you're listening, doesn't just blow your mind. I was on a mission. This is what I left behind. I miss you every day. Seek a little strange and unusual, and you may find life beyond all comprehension. A message, a mess in multiple dimensions, a little unconventional. I know, mama, I won't run away. And the way they do it, like the backing goes for that. I think that that's the perfect song to uh, kind of empower standing ovation in an audience but ain't it strange i don't know i i like the song but i just don't know how well it works in a closing number and um, basically i do i do like the way people just kind of he admits that he did wrong and whatever and it's like ain't it strange when an asshole saves the day and like and then then he invites Charles and, and stuff to say and they all do their little raps and in the end they say oh I, I was an asshole I was an asshole but then when Lydia goes up to do her, her rap they all jump in and when she's about to say I was an asshole they, and they all say no you're a teen which I thought was quite funny because yeah uh, being a being a teenager not too long ago myself like that that was quite funny a lot of a lot of stuff she said in the song but anyway that is kind of my thoughts on the beetlejuice the demos the demos the demos this was quite a long video it's 27 minutes long in a raw file but i'll probably edit it down and i hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts if you have any thoughts on it yourselves please do let me know i actually do want to thank jenny and i want to thank eddie and ghostlight records and pretty much anyone who made this beetlejuice the demo the demo the demos album uh, available because it's absolutely amazing thank you so much for giving us this little halloween treat i really do appreciate it but with that being said, my name's been Alan, you guys have been awesome, and I will see you guys next time, bye.